Well, Crystal, we've reached the end of the pop roster, which means it's time for our very, very most favorite segment, Metaphysical Corner. Well, what are we talking about today in today, Metaphysical Corner? We are going to hop over to the corner and we are going to talk about attachments. Well, which makes sense because we were pontificating, as we do, at the top of the podcast about Kanye West and people like Kanye West. And why are they acting out? Are they acting out of their pain body or do they have attachments? Do they have cords and attachments, and is that what is causing them to act out? So yeah. what, do you, what do you think an attachment is? Well, I've always thought an attachment was some type of lower vibrational entity being that just <laughs> attaches on to you and sort of drains your energy, feeds into your insecurities, your fears, and just your lower base instincts and amplifies them. And so then in your walking daily life, you then project all of this and you become, you know, if you're a negative person, you're infinitely more negative and you're talking to other people negatively and you're treating people, you know, poorly and you just sort of become the, the worst version of yourself in your waking, waking time. And I guess you would dream that too, probably. I think it would just sort of become who you are. Who do you, uh, how do you think that we collect attachments? Well, I think it comes from a variety of things. I think, you know, just, you know, if you're someone who isn't in gratitude and you're all always complaining oh this is wrong that's wrong oh nothing ever happens to me oh all the bad things always happen to me you're just lowering your vibration you're keeping it low and it's sort of like a lighthouse a beacon for for those entities and energies to come to you because they feed off of that so i think if you stay in a lower vibrational space that just opens you up to that sort of thing Correct. I think that is that is true. Well, so an attachment is an energy, so or a form of energy, a pattern of energy that attaches itself to you. In Hawaii, we call these attachments uhani noho. They burrow into areas of the energetic body and also the physical body, and they can use places of wounds or scars in order to kind of get in there and lodge and then start to change the field and the energy, which can affect how you feel and can affect your health and can affect the way that you think and so on. So you've got uhani noho or entities and attachments that are right on your being. And then you have the attachments that are in your space. For example, the ones that you generate. And so let me start here <laughs> with the reality that everything is just energy and we're energy moving around the planet. So you right now, you are energy and you exist also in a field of energy. And this field okay. and you are magnetic. You're magnetic at any level, whether you're enlightened magnetic or whether you're base animal nature magnetic, you're always magnetic, which means you are always drawing to you according to who you are, vibrationally speaking. So you're right. If you are existing in a lower vibrational frequency, if you're negative, if you're fearful, if you're rageful, you're going to be always attracting magnetically conditions and experiences that are in alignment with that to include patterns of energy that we would call attachments. And the more you indulge these lower states of consciousness, the more of this trash you begin to collect in your field. And you collect enough trash, you become a hoarder. Like that show, Hoarders. Hoarders. You walk in and there's streams of fecal matter going down the living room. Have you seen that? Uh, oh my uh, God, don't get me so. Yeah. There's just like I remember one episode they found the family pet behind uh, a sofa under a bunch of books. Ooh. And oh, I thought the dog ran away 10 years ago or something. And or the, no, it just died under the. Or the cats. Stuff. Jeremy yeah. and I started calling them flat cats because they're just be flat cats. <laughs> you would be. <laughs> yeah, so you, your feel. Hashtag horrible. Horrible. Your field becomes just magnetically filled with all of this detritus and trash. And that begins mm -hmm. to change who you mm -hmm. are. So you're not clear just generally. 
Now, again, you also generate these. So if you're in a state of fear, you're in a state of rage, you're also emitting that. You're not just drawing to, you are emitting that energy. And energy just, it doesn't just stop or cease to be. It transforms, it becomes something else. And what it can become is a thought form or a tulpa. And if you continue to generate this energy and feed the tulpa and the thought form that is in your environment, they become more intelligent. And I know we've discussed this before, but the more intelligent they become, the more they start to like manipulate the strings and puppet who it is that you are because they want more of the energy that created them. So they're attached to you in that way. Plus you've got the attachments that are in your field and this is very disturbing. And I think, I remember listening to Malachi Martin, Father Malachi Martin on Coast to Coast back in the 90s when Art Bell who I love, was the host. And he was interviewing Malachi, Malachi Martin. And Malachi was saying that he's gone all over the world and he's met so many people who are perfectly possessed, perfectly possessed, like totally taken over either by an entity or by these types of collections of energy that have so occluded the prime energy of the soul. So as the only thing that is acting out in that person's life is the entity or the detritus. That's what so an attachment can I, is. Mm -hmm. Can I ask, does this then, do these energies then become sentient beings to a degree? Or am I not using the term right? Yes, autonomous sentient. Yes, they become intelligent. They become aware of themselves. And they also become aware of their need for continued resources and energy. For the majority, they depend on the host that created them or housed them. Okay, like if you attracted it in and now you're housing it, they depend on the host for that. Or if you emitted and created it, they're depending on the host for that. And the more you feed them, the more intelligent they become, the more organized they become. And at some point, they can become autonomous, meaning they can detach from the host and start moving around to other people in the house and manipulating energy in that life or bop on over to the neighbor's house where they also have some conflict and some drama that feeds them and they'll kind start manipulating them like a ghost. Yeah, and it's okay. often misinterpreted as a ghost or a spirit when in reality, it's your neighbor, Harold, <laughs> who's been in a conflict with his wife generating nonstop these thought forms and now they're smart and they're bopping around the neighborhood. Like wow. now extrapolate out to the whole planet and the constant state of fear that we're in, the constant state of anxiety that we're in, and we are taking it in, but we're also generating it out and creating these forms. Now, the Bible crazy. calls these things principalities and powers, not unlike angels, and so rulers over nations and cities and communities. I wonder how many of those principalities and powers are just auto-generated by a population that is in fear or is in anxiety. So we, we brought up attachments as it concerns Kanye because it's a good question to ask. Is this Kanye? Kanye doing all of these things and making all of these posts and talking about God in the way that he's talking about God? Or does Kanye have some attachments that might be intelligent, that might be manipulating the strings and puppeting him into behavior? Because I think that can happen. I mean, that makes a lot of sense when you look back at his overall behavior. You know, it's sort of like a progression, right? You know, it's kind of, and then it just keeps coming up and up and up. I feel like it maybe could be an attachment or attachment plural. Right. And the thing about attachments is that they um, there's a perverse nature to them. It's not like they're good for you. You know, it's yeah. not like they're helping you to be balanced and centered or clicked into your higher self. They're always causing a distortion or an aberration. So if Kanye had attachments, what we're seeing is the distortion. It is the, the out picture stuff of his attachments. It's not really him, which is why I'm wondering like, what's going on with you? Because there is, there are times when we view someone like Kanye, where he seems really clear, he's got a vision, he's creative, he's building, he's doing stuff and yeah. it's meaningful, yeah. right? So he's he's present there, I assume. And then there's these other times when he kind of clicks out and he goes back into yeah. the hoarder house, you know, with all yeah. his hoarder friends. 
who cause him to act out and speak out. I think it's a spiritual thing. I mean, we talk about when he behaves in this way, you know, what we pick up energetically, it's, we always say it's yucky, it's low vibe. Right. Now you wonder, you know, is that what we're tapping into? That he's, you know, has these attachments. That is, so let me ask you this question. So let's say somebody listening identifies, wow, you know, my behavior really hasn't been me. You know, when did I become like this? Maybe I have attachments. So if they have identified that they have these attachments, what can they do right now, this minute, as soon as they finish listening to us to start separating these attachments, neutralizing them and getting them the hell out of their life? And I know that's a lot. It's a no, lot, but maybe just a couple of basic things that they could do to start. Sure. The first thing I would do is say the Lord's Prayer. Edgar Casey, the sleeping prophet, stated that the Lord's Prayer strengthens and balances one, each line of the Lord's Prayer strengthens or balances one or more chakras. This is your energy. This is your energy center. And in order to get rid of low energy or toxic energy, you need to get your primary energy in order. And you want to start with the chakras. So saying the Lord's Prayer is a very quick way. And if you could do this underwater, even better, because what water does is cut all of the electromagnetic cords and those cords facilitate attachments. So if you get under a shower and you've got the water running from the crown all the way down the body to the feet and then down the drain, and you say the Lord's Prayer, envisioning that all of these attachments are also dissolving or washing away, then you're bringing your energy back into a balanced place and you're getting back into that empowered position. The antidote to darkness of any kind is always light. So I'll say that again. The antidote to darkness is always light. So if you have attachments or if you're living in a house, like if you're living in a house and your parents are fighting all the time or your father is abusive, or if you're in a marriage where your partner is toxic and critical and abusive and it's nonstop, you are probably living in a house full of thought forms and you may be subject to attachments or your husband has the attachments. So for you, you've got to find ways in your life to bring in the light and you got to start with yourself first. Don't worry about your parents. Don't worry mm -hmm. about your husband. You got to put the oxygen mask on for yourself first and get your vibration in order. Because when your stuff is cleared out, you are in a stronger position. Really, you're holding light. And if you're holding light, the darkness cannot exist inside of you or around you. So that is the antidote to it. So how do you get light? How do you bring in light? There's a lot of different ways to do that. Nature is one of the most powerful ways to very quickly align to the light. The energy of Gaia, the planet, is at the same level as the archangels, which is just one step above the archangel is source energy, right? So Gaia is right up there, and it's the easiest way for us to just get ourselves in order energetically. So get outside, spend time in nature, get in the water, take your shoes off, plant them on the grass, and bring up that Gaia energy. That'll start clearing out all of the detritus and the hoarders in your house. Also vibrational, like high vibrational music, filling your space with high vibrational music. I just had a hoodoo practitioner on my Life Magnetics podcast who was talking about how every Sunday he cleans his whole house and he brings out the pine saw because pine has very cleansing properties. Yeah, absolutely. He gets the Florida water, he puts it in with his mixture and then he just cleans the whole house and as he does it he's listening to gospel music so it's real high vibe and he's singing so he's bringing in the vibration and he's clearing all that junk out and he does that every single Sunday so doing things that put you in that higher frequency of joy and love and peace oh the attachments hate that and absolutely the darkness cannot overcome the light and they flee. So it's having a practice of vibration modification and also telling them to go. Like the coolest thing about Jesus is that he never played around with that. He said, no, you get out of that man and go in that herd of swine right this second you go. He commanded it, he demanded it, and the universe and the physical reality arranged itself around his intention and his declaration. So if you've got problems like this, then demand, declare, intend as you clear and as you bring in the light because they have to obey when you're standing in your dominion they've got to obey and last but not least to answer your question you can also call in a spiritual practitioner 
Now I do some of this remotely. I don't do this for business, but I have done this remotely. You can have people come into your space and clear it out. You can have people work in your aura with your chakras and help your vibration. So there may yeah. be somebody that you could call in to help with that. Well, you do Reiki, right? I do. I do. So with Reiki, do you ever encounter attachments? And if so, like, how do you handle that? I, so, you know, I basically, when I go in and I'm going through each chakra, I basically, I, I do this sort of threefold thing. I cleanse, I balance, and I lock. So once you get it balanced, I mean, the lock doesn't last forever, but it really locks in that, that energy that, you know, that, um, universal life force energy that you're channeling because you're not, you know, you as the practitioner are not healing the person or the energy. You're just drawing down the universal life force energy. You're the conduit into the other person you're directing it in so i i cleanse balance and um kind of like washing your face cleanse tone moisturize <laughs> but you're basically you're cleansing you're balancing that chakra and then you're locking it and when i find those cords you know universal life force energy is all you know that is high highest vibrational energy that source energy so once that gets into those areas those attachments just it's like you just like wormy pasta you just see them pew, like you know just get off and go and once you lock that chakra they can't reattach but you have to maintain that you've got to keep your energy high you know and, and i do chakra attunements on people on a regular to kind of help even weekly but daily you should be you know i always tell you i i cut cords every single day you have to because they like to just keep warming their way back mm -hmm. into your life, your body, your energy. And I'm not having any of that. But um, but that, like you say, you know, like I ground myself. It's always earth energy. You know, I just even, you know, you can do it in your house. You don't have to. If you can't get outside, if it's a rainy day and you don't want to go outside, you can't put your feet on the ground and just imagine that earth energy coming through, the, the roots of it coming into your body. And I just feel it come all the way up to the top. And, you know, when I'm doing uh, Reiki, I'm imagining you know you just that source energy coming down through my crown and it goes through my whole body and then i send it out you can do that i mean opening windows is a great way to do it as i mean, bring in as much light into your space as possible and like you said anything that brings you love light and joy you know like you say darkness does not like that it hates that so the more you bring in it's just less likely to come into your space and if it happens to get in you very quickly get in your dominion and get it out tell it to go. Well, and the thing is, is because we're big sponges, we're magnetic and our field is magnetic. We go into the Walmart, or we'll go into the Safeway. And if we're in a low mood or we're indulging kind of that negativity, that's what we are attracting. So having a practice of always making sure that you're cutting cords as you do at night before you go to sleep or that once a day you're going outside and you're pulsing all that detritus, the hood is the flat cats. We got to get them out. That's so sad. It's really <laughs> sad. But I mean, you got to get the flat yeah. cats out. You got to get all of that stuff out and just keeping yourself clean in that way and yeah. doing what you can. So attachments aren't scary per se. Oh my God, they've got an attachment. They're everywhere. Energy yeah. is everywhere. And we're going to encounter and connect with energy all the time. It's about being conscious of, and the more you refine spiritually, and with your sensitivity, the more you can feel when a cord is attaching to you, like you can actually physically feel that in your body or you can notice, oh, mm, I have a weird little aberrant thought or an emotion that doesn't make a whole lot of sense. That could be an attachment. And then you can in that moment that you notice it, boom, pulse it out or Absolutely. deal with it with the light. But I mean, it's just part of being alive is part of something. Yeah, that, absolutely. But when you're not conscious and you you don't know about this and you're just living your life out here thinking you can say and do whatever you want and operating under grand illusions of self which are driven by the ego again Kanye West driven yeah. by the ego then you really aren't you aren't conscious and aware of the things that are puppeting you you're a puppet for the Absolutely. darkness and you don't want that no you don't want that you certainly yeah, don't mm -mm. I tell people, if you're getting ready to go into a closed in space or a space where you're going to be around a ton of people, ground yourself before you go in. Just take that moment and feel that earth energy before you go in. That will give you one a peace of mind before you head in. I don't like to be in big crowds of people anyway. So I always take a moment while I'm, you know, approaching where I'm going and just really pull myself together and center myself because it's, it's unnerving for me to even go to the grocery store 
all that energy just it's too much so i have to always you know take a moment try to ground myself do that before you go anywhere even before you go to work take a moment in your car before you get out you mean just or you get to your office get to your space just sit for a moment and ground yourself so you have a good day Yeah, the entire time you're driving to your job, listen to high vibration spiritual music or whatever music gets you into joy. I remember Dr. Wayne Dyer actually went to see him many years ago and he was talking about this one piece of music that he just loved and he played it for the crowd and it was just so beautiful. And he's like, I play this every morning as I'm going to do whatever he does. And he's like, when I tell you the traffic clears, I catch all the greens, I'm up there in my joy, I'm singing along with it, and I'm affecting the entire space because that's the nature of light. And none of that darkness, which is a red light, or which is road rage in the next car over, none of that touches me because of what I am maintaining in my vibration so i've never forgotten that so so having things that you can actually use to get your vibration up is really important very much so absolutely yeah 